one of the things that you spoke about is how changes in even the infrastructure of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has caused nine mornings to maybe die or have to morph, have to pivot. And you spoke about the disappearance of the beaches at Harbour Club and Otley Hall. Over the years, what sorts of significant changes and challenges has Nine Mornings experienced and how were those mitigated against? Um, uh, another very good question. If you, if you track the changes per generation over the last, let's say, 60 years, my parents will tell me about, my parents and grandparents to tell me about Nine Mornings when they went serenading. You know, they did a lot of house to house with boom drum and string band. Um, that particularly disappeared when people began to have gates and dogs and burglar alarms and all this sort of stuff. People no longer serenading because in those days you didn't have television. So entertainment came to you. So you look forward, you put up your money, you put up some drink or some black cake or something, you know, to give to people. So you look forward. And people use it also as a means of raising funds. So a group of us, you know, looking for money to buy presents, we would organize a serenading band and we went house to house. And we put the money together because people were looking for entertainment. Once, once cable and television and all this other stuff came in, people be, became, became closed in, right? So, so, so that, that entertainment now was more look like as, as a distraction, you're making noise in the head, right? <laughs> as, as, as we got into the, the 50s and 60s and 70s, a different generation had the era of the bands and bands and feds, right? Um, your generation would not know anything about dance into a life band because you all you know about is... is, <laughs> is My DJs. God. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite a spring spotting. chicken. Right, okay. We had Climax, Latin Airs, Blue Rhythm Combos, Spotty Phonics, a whole lot of bands. And, and, and these bands are played to the various feds and, and dance halls across the country. Um, that again has disappeared. I, I can't think of any clubs in St. Vincent now. I, I can't think of any place you can go and fed or dance or live, but I would ask you, when is the last time you danced on a in a fed? It's been a and while. So, <laughs> good. so yeah, that particular, as, as a matter of fact, in those days, the DJ was just a filler while the band took a rest. No, if you if you go the other room, people make noise if the DJ don't play and then and uh, play the music and all the stuff. All the stuff. So, so the different generations had different attractions for the different particular areas. Now, when those bands disappear, as as a matter of fact, I, if I ask you now, Cleo, how many to name three bands in semester and means right now? I don't. You can name two. <laughs> No, right? <laughs> I I, exactly, I know I know there's the band that Avi has. I know RS Factor has a band, but beyond that, no, I'm stumped. <laughs> exactly. and, and, and you you only see these bands perhaps at Carnival time. Kinetics, that's Carnival. the band I was thinking of. Right, those, and those bands only perhaps emerge at Carnival time to back up the Calypso. Quite right, band. quite right. And even the Calypso then struggled to find bands. That's why we had to revert to the police band. Right, so that particular era had. Was, was the bands and, and the plane in the fest and so on. When that died down and, and the discos uh, you know, went out, we went to street activities, which is a modern area, in order to perpetuate and, and get people interested in coming out of their homes. So the changes were due to generational changes and changes in the entertainment landscape in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Now that we have, well, an increase and pervasive availability of technology and everybody has a phone, a tablet, everybody has television and streaming services, plus COVID-19. This is another set of challenges that could possibly impact Nine Mornings. And what we have seen is that each of these eras had the potential, each of the changing of the eras had the potential to cripple Nine Mornings. So what are we doing to make sure that there's not another paralyzing relapse and that nine mornings will just continue <laughs> continue you, in its yeah, form. You're 100% correct. Every effort has been made to ensure that the tradition uh, remains. What we have done is say, okay, let's move with the times. Let's, let's go with what is, is, is out there. So we've gone from street activities now to enclosed structured activities where we say only vaccinated people can, can be part of it. 
So it's a way of maintaining the tradition amidst the prevailing conditions and circumstances. So, so the early morning tradition is still being kept alive. The, 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 the free and spontaneous part of it is, is now more structured because we want to keep the tradition alive. So, so for 2021, it's enclosed activities for vaccinated people. Okay, those, explain, those explain uh, enclosed because even though people are vaccinated, there's still going to be some sort of a requirement for distancing. So explain enclosed for me. Traditionally, um, for the last 25 years, we have been having street activities, you know, village squares, roadside, you know, activities. Now we're moving to enclosed areas where you could control entrance to the, to the venue. You can encourage people continuously to social distance and wear the mask and so on. So for example, the Kingston program is being held at the Victoria Park. The nine nights at the Victoria Park is restricted now. At, at the Botanic Gardens, is restricted to vaccinated people only. So, so, so you're trying to maintain the traditions amidst the circumstances by, you know, obeying obey the various health protocols. In so when you say enclosed, you don't necessarily mean bricks and mortar enclosed. You just mean in a very specific Contra location where specific location are controlled entry is controlled. I understand. Yes, entry is restricted to people who are vaccinated. One of the yeah. things that you mentioned earlier is the fact that Nine Mornings has not been, has not made it to our diaspora communities. Are we looking at developing some sort of activity in our diaspora communities? No, we still want you to come home to St. Vincent, I mean, because I will, I will tell you, um, within the last 10 years or so, with the development of the internet and social media, where activities have, have been streamed, you know, people like Cleo would be in New York and say, I, I with you are live, I'm, I'm live, I'm taking any live, but I, but I really want to be home. <laughs> Right? Um, Nine Mornings is, is not a festival that you can duplicate so easily outside of St. Vincent Gardens because you have to start with getting over the craziness of getting up at three and four o'clock in the morning and getting enough people to do that. Right? Now, at this time of the year in the northern part of the, the, the hemisphere, which is cold, that is very, very hard to convince people to, do, to come out in the bitterly cold at that, at that time in the morning. Right? But in, our, in, our, in all honesty, we prefer you to come home to get the authentic festival other than having it you know, spread across the globe because it, it still remains a cultural curiosity. And for you to enjoy it and experience it, you have to come to the source. That source is in the Denigradians. Now, I, I wrote a manual in terms of how to organize Nine Mornings in 1999. Um, and we use that for various communities wanting to develop. Every Vincentian organization I know outside of St. Vincent has asked for a copy of it, but nobody has been able, able to, to... <laughs> do it a festival. Okay, so you have some sort of secret code in it, and unless they could track that code, they really can't right. do the festival. And, and, and a code is simply to convince enough people to come out at three and four o'clock in the morning, in the morning. When, when the circumstances they know stay inside. Something that you mentioned that was of interest to me is the festival in the Grenadines. How is that compared to what happens on the mainland? What is different? Because I am assuming that the, the culture in the Grenadines is even a bit diverse and different from that on the mainland. How is their festival unique in its own way? Okay, um, very important question again. Um... In terms of the Grenadines, you remember I said to you when we were looking at the, the evolvement of the festival in terms of its spread across the country, we encourage each community to develop around the uniqueness of your community. So in Bekwe, instead of early morning activities, they have evening activities because Bekweans are not getting up in the morning <laughs> like me. <mainlanders. laughs> so, okay, opposed... so I'm seeing now nine mornings, nine days, and nine nights. And nine nights, right? So, so you have a combination, right? So in Beck, we know the folks come together in the evenings, um, right, right across the country. Uh, most of it under the almond trees, some of it, you know, in, in South Side and, 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 and um, up, up in other villages as well. But, but the large 
part of it is concentrated in two areas, Amon Tree in the harbor and, and south side down, down in Jelly. So, right, UNN is different now. UNN has early morning activities, traditional night morning activities where they bring out the boom drum and they have the rain dances and so on going on, reflected around the culture of union. So although it's a Grenadine Island, it's still different than, than, than um, Bekwe, right? Mustique now, Mustique has to evolve around the, 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 um, the, the peculiarities of the islands. It's, it's, a, it's like a tourist resort. So the activities have to be in the evening, right? So, so, in, so you get the visitors' involvement in the evening, right? So you have evening after activities in, in, um, in Mustique, right? Canawan, the activities are a little bit more removed from the main population area. So they go from evening into morning, right? So, so there's, a slight, there's a slight little difference in Canada when they go from evening. So they start like 11, 12 o'clock and go into the morning, um, like four or five o'clock. So, that so is a serious original round the clock. Exactly, right? So, so each island has its own uniqueness in terms of how they organize the festival based on the, the, the elements or the essence in terms of what they're trying to do given the circumstances of the various communities. And let's talk about the evolution of the festival. In the earlier days, it was just the window shopping and going for walks, the sea bathing, buying your buns and cakes, going to church, uh, the fets. Now we have the lighting up, we have the nine nights, and we have the different community activities. What are some of perhaps the more notable changes over the years, in addition to the lighting and... Right. Well, well, well I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because three important elements have emerged, right? We were very careful, we in terms of the Nine Mornings Committee, and the Nine Mornings Committee was Bassi Alexander, Lennox Bowman, Joel Providence, and myself. We were very careful because we, we said, look, we wanted to ensure that the Nine Mornings Festival especially helps to develop the culture and, and food, various foods or similar. It must showcase that, our traditional culture especially. So that every effort was made to include all the elements that it, that could ensure that the festival was was total, right? So that we we were catering for Vincentians living in Saint Vincent Grenadines, Vincentians coming back home, returning nationals and visitors. So we look at a total package: activities in the evening, activities in the morning. Which is why we said to communities, don't don't stretch yourself, don't worry yourself if you can't do nine morning activities. Your community have evening activities so that people can have somewhere to take the family in the evenings. So three things happen. One, we have the nine nights developing in some communities and it's now is a major way in the Botanic Gardens. Two, we have the lighting up of the various communities, which was an added dimension. So again, in the evening, you take the family, you drive as far as out the point over your fancy. All the way along to North Leeward, Chateaubelle, Rosebank, Rose, you know, Rose Hall. And there's traffic nice, jams. Exactly, nice creative designs, you know. And, and thirdly, we encourage a very important component, the music part of, of the festival. We encourage our artists to create music that to drive the festival. And Cleo, I want to commend our artists um, for supporting the, uh, the, the idea we, we, we put to them to develop music to support the festival. And they have done it in a very special way. Now we, we said to them, look, we don't want to create another carnival. What we want to do is to create another industry where you can benefit. So artists like Lute, uh, Fireman, Bumani, CP and so on have found that Nine Mornings is, a, is another important market because they can get to perform across the country for these nine days. And so the music that has come out for nine mornings has been tremendous. The more ones, CP Hall, Luther have produced a tremendous amount of music. Uh, some of our overseas artists have produced a, some, a tremendous amount of music that has support the fest, supported the festival and, and development of the festival. So those three critical elements, right? Plus we said, we said to people, look, when you stage your morning, nine mornings activities, bring out the food and drink, of your community. So when it comes to nine mornings, it's not coffee. It is bush tea, bakes and salt fish, madongo bakes, you know, blackfish, chuchu cake, that sort of stuff. So it has helped the culinary side 
and traditional foods are some ingredients to flourish. So, so you see a lot of people selling traditional foods when you when you come to nine mornings, and of so course we. Were, it's a really rich blended experience because we all know that experiential tourism has really taken off. And when people come to your country, they, they want to be immersed in the culture of the country. So they get some of the historical traditions, they get some of the food and they get some of everything that happens at around that time. And it brings and me... me let me, let me, before you ask that question, don't forget the question. Let me just interject something and, and piggyback on what you're saying. Using your own experience, with, within the last 20 years, look at how Sunday shopping has flourished in St. Vincent Grenadine. That's a direct result of the development and strength of the Nine Mornings Festival. Right. right? Look at how the, the, the push we made to have evening, evening activities has spawned so many caroling competitions. Right? There was a national caroling contest, there's a police caroling contest, and various caroling contests right across the country. So evening and morning activities have, have flourished as a direct result of the Nine Mornings Festival. And, and now Sunday shopping is so big that coming into town, well, especially before the pre-COVID it's, it's a hassle. A hassle. <laughs> Those are now opening and telling you, look, boy, Sunday shopping is so big now, the massive crowds in Kingston. The Sunday we launched Nine Mornings is always one of the biggest crowds you would see in Kingston. And the amount of people who participate in it shows you that people really and truly like and appreciate this festival that Vincent and call Nine Mornings. Nine Mornings, indeed. My yes. question that I was going to ask you is, um, it is about our unique culture and unique from getting up at three and four o'clock in the morning to having various bush teas, to enjoying the boom drum, to see baths where you can get them, to the, the, the um, soap operas produced by Stubbs and all of these different things. My pet peeve is the music. The, we are talking about a, a festival that is unique to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but the pre prevailing music is Parang, which is not unique to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Why is it that we have gone in that direction? Um, you know, our, our Vincentian music, Christmas music, has it, it, it may sound parang to you, you know, but it but it's essentially is a Vincentian nine mornings Christmas song that comes to our music. I want you to listen to, for example, Don't Wait Till the 25th by Lennox Bowman, right? And, and you get the S or, or Nine Mornings by Sule. Listen, and oh, we go in nine mornings by CP, and you will hear a distinct Vincentian Christmas song. There is a distinct Vincentian Christmas song. Now, now Parang is the traditional Caribbean Christmas music, and of course, elements of that will affect some of the music produced across the, the Caribbean. But Vincentian Christmas music has a unique song. So, so when you finish, what you can do, I want you to listen to Don't Wait Till the 25th by Lennox. We go in nine mornings by CP and nine mornings we come down by Sole and you'll hear the distinct Vincentian Christmas song come, coming through. Well, right? Okay, Michael, that was a good answer. That was a really good answer. <laughs> you could go on Family Feud with that one. That was a really good answer. But, yes, but, but there, there, is, there, is, there is a distinct song. Let me give you something that is weird and strange, Cleo, and perhaps, perhaps something you never even notice. When you think of steel band, what do you think of? Trinidad and Tobago, oil drums, carnival. Right. When you think of steel band, you think of carnival. But nine mornings, when it comes to nine mornings, the steel band gets more appreciation in nine mornings than for carnival, although the steel band is more a carnival um, instrument. Now, when you when you in carnival time, when the steel band playing is more like of a nuisance, you ain't jump into no steel band on, on the road. Is DJs and music trucks and so on. But for nine mornings, people don't want the steel band to stop playing. Right? When you come to King's Song, they want the steel band to go on and on and on and on. So much so that we develop the nine mornings train and a steel band music that is that you, you're going around with on the train. So that the, the pan man told me many, many years ago, so look, we're thankful for nine mornings because the steel band gets more appreciation during nine mornings than during carnival. Outside so then maybe we need to move Panorama to, to nine mornings. 
Again, right. make it uniquely Vincentio you now, panorama right. at Christmas time. Right, that is why the steel man is so central in, in, in Nine Mornings, basically, because the pan man said, look, we get more appreciation for the, the steel band music in Nine Mornings as opposed to, 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 to Carnival. The only time you hear steel band music in Carnival is perhaps Panorama Junior and Seniors. Outside of that, you really don't hear. You're not getting any on the streets, not even for Juve. But in Nine Mornings now, you get the steel band being highlighted and people enjoy it and especially returning nationals, they can't get enough of it, right? So it's, it's a strange, crazy thing that Nine Mornings has allowed the steel band to flourish as a live instrument, as opposed to in Carnival, and it becomes more like a nuisance and just for competition. We spoke a lot about returning nationals, about changing eras, and about the evolution of the festival and the different aspects of the festival in each of its eras. Uh, would you say that there is a sustained interest in Nine Mornings and that the young people are as interested in preserving Nine Mornings as perhaps the people of previous generations? There is, be because Nine Mornings has a high participation content. You know, like I always say, the stars of the show are the people. You come to Nine Mornings because you want to participate. It's not just I come to stand up and hear a concert. The children look forward to it because they get their time to go on stage and sing or do something and get a gift or whatever. So, so the, the, the parents will tell me, look, I can't get the child to wake up to go to school, but you wake, he waking me up to go night morning, right? For the Vincentians, is, coming back home is like a big line. Now, if you remember Cleo, back in our time, because you and I are in the same generation, Vincentians coming back home would lie on Heritage Square by Rick's Bar and so on. That's not happening anymore. There's no line by those bars, you, you know, people don't meet and greet anymore. On the, by, the, by the street bars for carnival. In nine mornings, they come down in large groups. We see them because they come on stage or they come with a special outfit or the special hat. So they use nine mornings now, which is a better environment. People not, you know, being violent or throwing drinks on you or, you know, cursing or whatever. So they feel more comfortable. That's why there is a morning just for returning nationals called Diaspora Morning because so many of them come and they come in groups. I, I particularly like the groups out of Canada, the various associations who come down. They organize, okay, we're going home for nine mornings. We got 25 people, we'll be there for nine mornings. You know, so they come as groups. I don't see that happening as can for Carnival. If, if they do come, and I, say, I, I know that they do come for Carnival, they tend to get lost or they don't get a chance to show that they come as a group. They may, they, 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 they may come and play with one of the mass bands. But their individualism in terms of a group is lost within the mass band. And maybe when they're going across the stage, somebody might say, oh, this section is the New York party or whatever. But the nine mornings is, is, is a big line. They get to come on stage and they get to go so many different act activities. And a lot of these activities, Cleo, are free. So yes. they, get to take the, they get to take the whole family around mm -hmm. with them. And it does, even though they are free, it doesn't mean that there's no economic activity generated because there are vendors who do what is traditional food or some traditional craft or something like that. So it still generates economic activity. I, I, I always say to people in a humorous review, um, a Vincentian coming home spends more money than sending it to Western Union or money grab. <laughs> if, you, if you're coming home for nine mornings or carnival or whatever, you got to rock it some money to treat the family, buy a drink for the boys, right? So there's direct economic benefit just from having somebody at home. And the fact that this person said, look, I, I, I want to go stops tonight. You driving out there with the family, when they reach out there, you're, you're going to buy something for everybody. You but it brings us, brings us to a very important point. If there are no admission fees for nine mornings, how is nine mornings funded? How is it sustained? The, the corporate community supports Nine Mornings is a big way because, um, because the development of the Nine Mornings Festival, there's increasing you know, economic activity for Christmas. So there's, uh, there's a lot of support. In addition, the various rural communities, remember, they, they also do a lot of fundraising by selling um, local food and drink. And they do a, a very good trade in, 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 in those things, especially the traditional foods. Because people do consume, I'm amazed at the volume when I, when I get reports from the various communities that people 
consume the amount of local food that people consume, especially at, at, at night morning time, right? So, so that that's that's where you got the the economic benefits in terms of fundraising. It's an opportunity for people to raise funds, and um, people will, will say to me, "Look, I get a chance to buy stuff for my house and my children at, at night mornings because I could come, I could park up my trailer or me whatever and sell things." And nobody in fighting out to scramble, nobody in teeth or anything, and people supporting you in a big way. So, that, so each community generates its own funds. It's not that the nine mornings committee has to find money to get each community started on an annual basis. Does um, support the, the festival in a, in a special way, right? So, so yes, there is funding from the central SVG nine mornings committee. Um, the National Archie being a, a major supporter, and Vinlek, for example, supporting the community lighting competitions. But the various communities do a lot of fundraising on their own um, uh, to, to, to beef up their, their resources. Understood. Michael, what's your favorite part of Nine Mornings? It's, it's people participation, especially the children. I will, I, let, me, let, me, let me give you four instances of why 